Hello everybody, here is just one video that I am trying to make to help you understand how to study for the physics exam. The key word here is be smart. You know, be scientific when you try to study, be smart. Number one, what's most important is you have to read the text before the lecture. This need not be an in-depth reading. Just get used to the topics, understand the keywords, highlight some stuff, have a bird's eye view of the chapter. Now this is very important. If you know what the chapter is about before you attend the lecture, you are already ahead of the class. Number two, if there is a pre-lecture quiz or an assignment, take it very seriously because this shows how much you have understood the chapter even before the lecture. Spend a little bit of time on that. Understand what the questions are about. Do not rush through it. Number three, when you are in class, be very attentive. Take notes. Be interactive. Ask pertinent questions. Your attention in class is very important in the understanding of the material. You cannot just be physically present in the class and mentally roaming around. You need to get this by practice. To listen to every word that the professor is saying. To try to grasp the material. And this lies just on you, with you. Number four, when you go back and try to get those Assignments then done, spend quality time on those. Watch the tutorials that come with the questions. Go back to the textbook. Refer your notes. Look at the problems worked out in class. Understanding is key. Do not memorize physics because it does not help you at all. Understand everything that you have to. Make a formula sheet. Write down each quantity and what they represent. Write their units down. Make the connections across the equations. For example, if there is an equation like resistance is equal to rho times L by A. Let me write that down for you. R is rho L by A. You look at those quantities and say R stands for resistance. It's measured in ohms and it's a property of a conductor whereby it resists the flow of current. Then you look at resistivity and say this is a material dependent quantity. It depends on the material. So copper has a certain value, aluminum has another value. Therefore, if the conductor is stretched, it doesn't change. If you get a bigger copper wire, it doesn't change. It depends on the material. L is the length in meters. You look at that equation and think to yourself, if the length is doubled, everything else remaining the same, then the resistance is doubled. Then you look at the area of cross-section. It's in the denominator. And you say, of course, if that's increased, the resistance decreases. Now, and you also start thinking, what could be the area of cross-section? What is the shape of a conductor usually? Isn't the cross-section circular? Well, then the area of cross-section is pi r squared, where r is the radius. In case it's rectangular, then the area of cross-section is the product of the width and the thickness. And that's how you study each formula. You take time to look at their units, what they stand for, how they can change, what else could be substituted for them. That is how, mainly how you prepare for the physics exam. Now read the summary section for every chapter because concept questions may be asked from them. If there are important laws in the chapter, like Kirchhoff's laws, or Ohm's law, you surely got to know what those are. The key concepts need to be memorized. Number seven, 
Do not look at a chapter as a whole, divided into units. And look at what each unit is talking about and then try to make the connections between the units. Every textbook is divided into units. Every chapter is divided into units. And that is with a purpose. Well, the biggest tip I can give you is review, review and review. Because the more times you review, the better grasp of the material you have and more goes into memory. The better is your understanding. Now, during the exam, it's very important that you look at all the questions before you start. Then identify those questions that you know you are sure about. Answer those questions first. You know what happens? Your confidence level gets a boost. And you have not wasted time because you know those questions. Keep the difficult questions for the later time. Because by now you have got a good grade and your confidence level is up. So you're able to think about the difficult questions. Keep track of time. You have to know how many minutes you have approximately to do one question. And you have to keep track of time. Do not leave any question unanswered. Put something down. Even a diagram will help you get some grade. Or maybe once you draw a diagram, you start thinking and you get it. You know, there is nothing that you get in trying to finish a test in half the time. It's a waste. So use the whole time. If you think you're finished, go back and review the answers. Maybe you made some silly mistakes. Go back, review them once, twice. Try to make it the best. Those are all the tips that I had for you. I hope this has been really useful. Thank you.